Well, looky here. You are listening to someone who is bold, authentic, diverse, unpredictable. Baby, I am unapologetically Ramon, and you have entered my zone, the QB zone, baby. Hello, somebody. we down to the QB zone for one more episode, of course, and I thank you guys for joining me. I have a question. Have you ever been on a bad day? And when you think back to that particular date, if your answer is yes, what made the day bad? What did the other person do that just messed it up for you? Or let me ask another question. Has a day ever went bad because you ruined it because you dropped the ball I'm going to have a little fun with y'all today because I want to talk about dates and, and just how people can ruin a date and actually I have 10 unconventional ways or really unintentional ways that a date can be sabotaged we can have all the right pieces in place to have a perfect date, whether it's the chemistry or the location or whatever, you know. But unintentionally, we go on these dates, and I have 10 things that we can do to just mess it up. And I'm curious, as you listen to these 10 things, how many you've experienced or how many you've committed yourself, you know. The delicate dance of dating. I feel like dance is definitely a dance. I feel like dating is definitely a dance or a game. Sometimes it can be both. And it can be a nerve wrecking game where one wrong move can send everything spiraling into disasters. Sometimes, without even realizing it, we commit social faux pas that can quickly turn a promising evening into a cringe worthy memory. What I'm going to talk about or what I'm going to share, as I stated once again, is 10 unintentional ways you might unknowingly ruin, or someone you know, a date. So sit back and let's just go ahead and dive into the first one. This one is called the phone addiction. Basically, this is when your phone steals the spotlight. Nothing screams disinterest more than being glued to your phone throughout dinner. Your date is right in front of you, eager to connect, but your attention keeps drifting back to that tiny screen. Remember, real conversations beat virtual ones any day. Now let's be clear though, let's let's just add something in here. I think at times though, you being glued to your phone is probably the only reason that's keeping you there because the other person's probably boring as hell. And the conversation just ain't doing it for you. This ain't just, it's not giving what you thought it was going to give. So it's like either you put this in this phone or this date going to be over in 0.5 seconds. Now the second thing that we can do unintentionally to ruin a date is TMI overload. This is basically when you overshare a lot. Yes, honesty is essential in any relationship. But there's a difference between being open and flooding your date with personal details that you probably should save for later. Some stuff just ain't first date conversation. You know, keep it light, keep it fun. Save the heavier stuff for when the time is right. Now, number three is fashion faux pas this is basically where you're dressing for a date and the way that you dress is a disaster (laughs) or you might not have you know you 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 overdress or you underdress you feel me so 
putting effort into your outfit shows you care. That is clear, right? You want somebody to look good, dress good, carry themselves a certain way. It makes you feel like, oh, they really want to put their best foot forward in meeting you. You know what I'm saying? But being overboard can lead to a fashion disaster. Mismatched socks, overly flashy accessories, or inappropriate attire can be very distracting and give off the wrong impression. And depending on where your date is, the venue, where y'all gonna be going, what y'all gonna be doing, you should keep it stylish, but comfortable. Number four, food fiascos. This is basically when the menu becomes your worst enemy. Choosing what to eat can be a minefield. I wanna use a different word, but I'm just gonna say a minefield. Ordering the smelliest dish on the menu, insisting on messy foods, or just being a picky eater can create awkward moments. You should opt for easy to eat options and be mindful of your dining etiquette. I know like for me personally, I don't like, and this could be weird, me personally, I don't let my hands be smelling like food. Like it drives me crazy. I do not want my hands smelly and messy with food. So, for example, although I love ribs, although I love, you know, specifically barbecue ribs, you know, I love hot wings, especially with certain sauces or marinades. I'm not eating that on no date, at least not the first date, because your hand get all messy and, and you know, I, when the food is real good and it's hitting the way I need to hit, I'm going to forget you there. I'm going to be quiet and it's going to be me and my food having a good old time. So for me, I do try to keep it light and easy going. A salad, pasta, um, not nothing with no red sauce because I don't have nothing. My luck is horrible. Last thing I need is spaghetti sauce spots on my goddamn clothes. Um, maybe a sandwich, maybe like a you know, nice little BLT or whatever. Um, but for me, more than likely, it's going to be some kind of fancy salad or... Um, Oh, I love salmon. I could eat salmon every goddamn day. So I'm probably could see myself having a fish, rice, veg, you know, something simple. The next thing is going to be number five, money matters. Basically, this is the concept of splitting the bill. This is the topic <laughs> that can go a variety of directions, right? Me personally, I do feel as if me being the man, if I'm organizing the date, if I'm, you know, I'm asking you on a date and it's, you know, this, you know, I'm initiating this, you know what I'm saying? You should be paying, I should be paying for it. Oh, excuse me. I, 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 me, I should be paying for it. I think that once we're in a relationship and, you know, we've been together for not a long time, but once we don't got a few dates on our belt and really enjoying each other, I don't think it's anything if the female um, decides to treat her man to a date. I, I don't think that. I think that's dope. I think that's cool. I think any man will appreciate that. Now, I think, a, I think that just to include everybody, if you are someone who is, have a preference for both or you know the same gender so you know you a female going out with another female you a guy going out with a guy i don't know about that one <laughs> i guess whoever planned the date should be the one that paid when you're dealing with you know same gender or whatever um oh i think we should just get more into hell just have a goddamn conversation let's just before we even ask you out on a date maybe strike up a conversation and kind of pick their brain on certain topics. And I could probably give you an idea of kind of what their mentality or what their ideas are when it comes to certain things like that. But, you know, the bill arrives and suddenly the atmosphere just turns tense. Have you ever been on a date? You having a good time or the vibe is okay. You know, it's, it's, you're content, you're satisfied. It's good enough. You know what I'm saying? But baby, as soon as that black leather thing come with that piece of paper in between, Maybe the whole vibe just changed. Have you ever experienced that? Just the whole atmosphere kind of turned tense. Figuring out the appropriate way to handle the check can be tricky. Be clear 
on your expectations, but also willing to compromise. Remember, it's not about the money, but the gesture. Now, I think also, yeah, no, I'm just going to go back to my original thought. I do feel like as the man, you should pay. Um, I do have some male friends who I like. The girl should pay sometimes. Then I have some male friends, the fraternity brothers. Baby, you better not dare put no car or touch your wallet like you finna pay for something. So, you know, I, once again, just make sure that everybody's on the same page as far as expectation. Because the last thing you want is thinking, oh, we finna go and split a bill. And then she looking like you, she looking at you, or the other person looking like you, like, okay, player. You ready to pay? What are we going to be doing next, you know? Number six, number six, number six. Bad jokes galore. Sometimes your humor just missed the mark, okay? Laughter is essential. For some things, some, some people, it's a huge turn on. Like, if I could tell you right now, for me, if you make me laugh, my God, you... You damn near got me hooked. Like, I just, I love humor. I love to laugh. It, it, it's, it's, oh my God, I've loved it ever since I was a child. Um, if you, yeah, if you can make me laugh, you, we, you really got a lot of, you starting out on a great foot. You got a lot of extra points here. You know, laugh is essential, but what happens when your jokes fall flat? You overuse sarcasm, inappropriate humor. Or inside jokes that leave your date feeling left out can be a recipe for disaster. Lighten the mood, but be sure to gauge their sense of humor first. That's why I feel like before we go on a, before you go on a date, you should at least have a conversation. Just kind of get a feeling for the kind of person they are. So you're not just walking in, really walking in blinded. Number seven, X talk this is what I like to say or call when the past haunts the present. Bringing up exes can be a major turnoff. No one wants to feel like they're competing with a ghost from your past. Focus on the present moment and getting to know your date instead of rehashing old relationships. Number eight, PDA overload. This is basically when public displays of affection just go wrong. A peck on the cheek is sweet, but excessive PDA can make others uncomfortable. Respect your date's boundaries and save the romance for more intimate settings. Remember, less is often more in these situations. Number nine, being a know-it-all. This is basically when expertise becomes a roadblock. We all love a good conversation. We know that. But dominating every topic with your knowledge can be exhausting. Listen as much as you talk and be open to learning from your date. A two-way exchange is far more engaging than a monologue. And lastly, number 10, rushing the future. This is basically when tomorrow is more important than today. While it's natural to seek future compatibility, bombarding your date with questions about marriage, kids, or future plans on the first meetup can possibly put unnecessary pressure in place. Enjoy the present moment and just let things unfold naturally. Listen, dating is a two-way street and being mindful of your actions can make all the difference in creating a memorable experience for both parties. So next time you find yourself on a date, steer clear of these pitfalls and focus on building a genuine connection. So one thing I thought was interesting before I let you guys go, I wanted to actually share <laughs> some examples of some like bad date stories, right? So I just came across a few. I'm going to share... I'm going to share three of them. And this one is called Like Father, Like Son. 
this person says this about their date. I once went on a date with a guy I matched with on an app. When he turned up, he looked considerably older than he did his photo. And when I pulled him up on it, he gave a vague, evasive answer. Finally, he admitted that he actually used a photo of his son and hoped the resemblance would pass. That's, that's crazy to me. Now, this one is called Grave Danger. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that. It's called Grave Danger. This is what this person said about their date. I had been chatting with the girl online for a few weeks. And when it came to arranging a date, she suggested that we meet at the graveyard. First of all, that's the... I'm sorry, I almost cussed. I hate... I have a whole... Me and graveyards that... Yeah, okay. Let me just continue. She wanted me at the graveyard. It was so out the blue. I thought she was joking. But turns out she was really into the afterlife. I was curious since we've been talking for quite a long time so I went this person stupid as hell she had laid out a picnic blanket on someone's grave and wanted us to eat on it I was too hungry to leave so I stayed and tried to ignore the morbidity of the situation there was no second date baby there would never been a first date cause soon you said got there in the graveyard like you're crazy and if you're serious, this is the last time we're having a conversation. So let's see. I said I wanted to give y'all three of them. Let me see what I want. So this one is called Hit and Run. This is what this person said about their date. I went on a first date with a guy. And as we crossed the road to head into the restaurant, a car reversed into him. He insisted it barely got him and he was fine. Halfway through the meal, I realized his leg was bleeding and he was trying to style it out. We had to call an ambulance in the end and I was stuck paying the dinner bill. Okay, I'm just going to give y'all one more. Just one more. This one is called Expectation versus Reality. This is what this person said about their date. A guy who I had a crush on in high school asked me out when we met at a mutual friend's birthday party. I was over the moon and we arranged to meet up quite quickly as he wasn't really into texting. We went for dinner and I realized I was doing most of the talking. When I asked him about himself, he gave one word answers and wasn't very conversational. After several awkward silences, I was gearing up to let him down gently and he straight up said I'm a lovely girl but things won't work out between us <laughs> so y'all know what I'm finna do I'm finna give you a quote before I let you go so this is what this quote says dear past I survived you dear present I'm ready for you dear future I'm coming for you 